I'm a little nervous. Shall we go? Don't buy drive available. Now you're an automated model. Whoa, that happened? Is your... Are oh, you... His not, feet are off the pedals. He's not doing anything. So right now that the car is doing, it's modulating brake and steering for him. So it's 100% automated driving. You're not doing this with your mind? <laughs> <laughs> This is it. The car is driving enough. itself using the computers in the vehicle to do that. But once. These sensors can actually operate thousands of times faster than a human being can. Ugh. Sorry, that freaked me out a little bit. <laughs> I, f I feel so naked. <laughs> I'm shocked at how far the technology's come. And Annie tells me AVs could prevent 30,000 traffic fatalities a year. I'm excited to meet one of the world's top climate scientists, Dr. Jeffrey Greenblatt. He's an expert in transportation. So what you see is people in cars not driving. There's a right. guy talking on the phone. There's no steering wheel even in that one. This person's sleeping. The future is very laid back. The car is traveling in both I'm, directions through intersections. I'm already nervous. <laughs> well, don't worry. There are algorithms that control the motion so that it's safe. And they ride in an environment that is cheaper and less polluting. So here we have the person calling up the car, being charged by solar power in a fleet pod, and then it comes to the person, and he gets in and he's on his way. If Jeff's right, almost no one would even need to own a car. We'll be ordering up self-driving electric cars from ride shares like Uber and Lyft. They'll be powered by the sun, and they'll communicate with each other, and there'll be less traffic and pollution. We need to reduce our global emissions to near zero by the middle of this century in order to avoid dangerous climate change impacts. But Jeff's worried. We could head in the entirely wrong direction if we don't fully embrace electric cars in this new autonomous world. So a key change that has to happen along with vehicle automation and ride sharing is the use of electric vehicles. Electric vehicles, or EVs, are only as clean as their power source, but even in states where they rely heavily on fossil fuels for electricity, they're still cleaner than most gasoline cars. This is your traditional internal combustion engine compartment. It's full of hundreds, if not thousands, of parts. Oil, coolant, an exhaust system that can rust out. It has endless amounts of emissions equipment. It's what we're used to. So if you come over here, I'll show you the difference. Now this is essentially the whole thing. Two electric motors. You got a differential that changes the power out to the axles that drive the wheels. And you have a battery pack that supplies power to the motors. Wow. That's it. Wow. That requires endless amounts of maintenance costs. So as a fleet owner, right. you wouldn't want those maintenance costs. Right. And then you got the cost of fuel. Electricity is cheaper than petroleum, even as cheap as gas is today. This is the future. I find that pretty amazing that you're saying that because theoretically it's giving you less work. So I think that's pretty <laughs> great, really. Electric cars really are a superior technology that could save us money and help save the planet. But only 1% of new cars on the road in the US are EVs. Why? I'm told EVs were thriving here because of a generous tax credit, but then it was taken away? The incentives here in Georgia made the vehicles financially viable. Mm -hmm. With the removal of the tax credit by the state, sales have dropped 90 percent. And you know, we, that's what we anticipated, and that's exactly what's been happening here. And why did the incentive go away? There are folks in the legislature, and particularly on the Republican side of the House, that think that tax credits are not the way to go. Obviously, this is, there's some ambiguity in this topic, because you can't just subsidize something completely. Uh, forever. We've used tax policy in this country for years to get people to do what you want them to do and penalize them for doing the things you don't want them right. to do. You know, that's why there's a dollar something tax per pack on cigarettes. Right. Why? But should taxpayers be helping people buy EVs? Don thinks so. He says we've been subsidizing the oil industry in America to the tune of tens of billions of dollars a year. So what impact did killing the incentive actually have on local businesses? 
up through uh, June of last year. The uh, Leaf was our largest volume car. We were the largest electric vehicle dealer in the world at one time. Sure. Wow. In the last month of the tax credit, we sold 274 Leafs. So what was that like going from that to Well, to the, after the next the tax month incentive? we sold uh, two Leafs. So wow. it was kind of like a huge hangover. It's frustrating to see lawmakers getting in the way of solutions to our climate change problems. Hey there. Hey, Chelsea. Ty. Chelsea Sexton dedicated her life to fighting for electric cars. In fact, she recently organized a National Drive Electric Week event here in LA. So I'm curious about whether this is an inevitability that, that cars are going to go electric, or are you worried that, like before, this is going to start and then drop off again? It's not inevitable yet. It's not? Yeah. yeah. We've had a few years of EVs. Everything looks really neat and rosy. And yet, if the California law changed tomorrow, these cars would all go away. We need the public to give them a shot. And then also, you know, legislative, whether mandates or incentives, but the political support. The more we do this, the more we are going up against forces that are large. But let's face it, oil companies don't want to see electric right. cars happen.